gentlemen, uh, when, it, when it comes to comedians, our next guest is certainly one of them. You can see, you can see this man at the uh, Comedy Underground in Seattle, February 18th, 19th, and 20th. Folks, do me a favor, get ready to laugh. Here he is, George Miller. George, come on out here. Thank you. I'm recording. I got my audio recorder back there, so even if you don't like me, try to laugh anyway, because I've already got a lot of tapes where I eat it. Thank you. <laughs> so I've been wondering something for months now. Why would anybody shoot anybody over Joey Buttafuoco? <laughs> I got a lot of questions like that I can't answer. Does Richard Dreyfus really have a stupid brother named Doofus Dreyfus? <laughs> if somebody says they're a pathological liar, should you believe them? <laughs> if you get high and then pray, does it count? <laughs> when you see a little old lady loaded down with packages running for the bus, do you secretly Root for the bus? <laughs> so Cheers went off the air, one of my favorite shows. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Why don't you just stay home with your family? <laughs> Here's a quick impression. Here's David Letterman in prison. Dave in prison. How much time we got? How are we doing on time? <laughs> I want to talk about that lady who keeps breaking into his house now, okay? Because she, because of all the publicity, she has become the best known person to ever come out of her hometown. In fact, the mayor was going to give her the key to the city, but she told him she didn't need it. <laughs> I want to talk about Bill Clinton, because I think the most interesting thing he ever said was during that campaign, he said, in America, we don't have a single person we can waste. I don't think he's ever seen Richard Simmons. <laughs> More laughter from this section, I think, yeah. Well, Clinton does talk about taxes quite a bit, and this has not been proposed, but there was talk of a $250 tax on newborns. So who would have to pay this? The mom, the dad? Maybe the baby would owe it. The kid's in the hole as soon as he gets out of the... The most unbelievable thing in 1993, there was a juror in the second Rodney King trial had never seen the videotape. What a news hound this guy must be. I wondered, are there other things he hasn't seen, like the sky? I'm dumb on anything mechanical. I once drove from Seattle to New York with my emergency brake on. Greyhound fired my ass right after that. I can never program my VCR, so I get one of these new voice-activated VCRs. I'm not mechanical, but at least I can talk. So I get it home, I say, Sunday night, 9 o'clock, Channel 4. The VCR said, no. <laughs> it's amazing, you got this gizmo, you tell it to do something, it does what you tell it, and I do have one, I didn't have to pay for it. I went to the department store, I found one I wanted, I told it, go get in the car. <laughs> So I saw indecent proposal finally. Somebody said to me, would you let your wife sleep with another man for a million dollars? I said, well, sure, she's doing it now for free. <laughs> Thanks a lot, I enjoyed talking to you. Thanks a lot.
next guest is a uh, very funny gentleman and an old friend of ours. He will be appearing. Nice sweater, George. Did you, what, did you just get back from Lily Hammer? Thank you. <laughs> he will be appearing at the New Improv in San Juan, Puerto Rico, July 26th through the 31st. That's the perfect time to be in San Juan. <laughs> Uh, and then, after that, you can fly out to Reno, Nevada to see him at the Reno Hilton uh, next week. Or no, I guess that comes be... Well, it'll be on the hotline. Call in and get the information. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, a very funny man, George Miller. George, come on out! Hey. Okay, I was thinking now, uh, stuff happens in California that doesn't happen anyplace else. You're late. I couldn't help it. The freeway broke. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was in Las Vegas, and I see this real odd thing. I'm at the Caesars Palace coffee shop, and this lady's bawling out her kid. Eat your potato. Eat your vegetable. Don't you know there are starving children at the Tropicana? Oh, I thought this was stupid. At the Nixon funeral, the media kept saying all living ex-presidents are in attendance. Yeah, I had a feeling if they showed up, they would be alive. What are they going to do? Prop up Eisenhower? What are they going to do? And some similarities among the presidents. Jimmy Carter's a carpenter, likes to build houses. And of course, Clinton wants to nail anything that moves. <laughs> Divided opinion. And I couldn't believe this, John Wayne Bobbitt, May 6th in Las Vegas, arrested for slapping around his fiance. I mean, what is it gonna take for this guy? <laughs> well, some couples have pet names for the guy's manhood. And I always wondered if Bill and Hillary did that. And then I saw an actual headline. President goes a year without using veto. He has been pretty cranky lately. And Tom and Roseanne, boy, oh boy, for a while there, she had a restraining order against him. He wasn't supposed to go near her. Gee, that must be tough on a guy. <laughs> Sometimes women can be cruel. I was trying to impress this lady, and I told her, I said, a while back, I had a near-death experience. She said, you should try again. Maybe you can go all the way next time. <laughs> They're applauding. I had a lot of regular jobs. When I would apply for a job, I'd say anything to get it. I'd lie about my qualifications. Are you bilingual? Oh, sure, I'd do it with anybody. <laughs> I worked at this medical building for a while. One time, I overheard this odd conversation. Uh, doctor, after my plastic surgery, can I take my old face home with me? Uh, no, we keep that and put it on someone who looks even worse than you do. <laughs> so, do you ever smoke a lot of pot and go to the supermarket and wish Campbell's soups were in alphabetical order? <laughs> Here's a couple of things I don't like. It's people who make a big deal about how many hours they've been awake. I have been up since five o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, you ought to think about going to bed. <laughs> what about people who say this? You're gonna get yours. He's gonna get his. Well, what if he doesn't? <laughs> what if there's a mix up and he gets some of theirs? This was unbelievable. In a Miami motel a couple of months ago, a German tourist checked in, went to bed, noticed a foul smell, got up the next morning, discovered a corpse underneath the bed. A corpse. I mean, how about a meeting of the housekeeping staff? I 
I stay at the second-rate hotel in Los Angeles. I stayed there many times. They would always try to act like they were better than they were, like they had a little card in every room. Did we meet your expectations? Uh, yeah, I thought it would be crappy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed talking to him, did you? George enjoyed talking to you folks. <laughs> A little bit. We're gonna do another commercial. We'll be right back. Thanks, George. Thanks, Daisy. Yeah. is a uh, very, very funny man and an old friend of ours, and beginning tomorrow, he will be appearing live in Red Wing, Minnesota at the Treasure Island Casino. Ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Please welcome back to The Late Show, George Miller. George, come on out. Please Thank have you. a seat. Nice it to see you, George. Me just yeah. as we were doing that, because sure. on another show one time, the audience was applauding. Right. We were shaking hands. They didn't hear it, but you told me to sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was kind of an odd request for a talk <laughs> show. I, I let's try and put uglinesses <laughs> behind us, shall All right, we? All right, let's start. Uh, what have you been up to? Well, I went to the uh, Grand Canyon. Oh, it's I know. beautiful. Man, What they say lovely. about it is true. You stand there at the Grand Canyon, you feel so inferior, so insignificant, sure. and then I realized something. Uh. I felt like that before I got there. Uh -huh. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're at the Grand Canyon. Done anything else? Oh, boy, an awful thing happened in L.A. Guy runs into my car, obviously his fault. Uh. His Weasley, to use your word, insurance yeah. company would not pay off. I said, why? They said, well, we enjoy collecting premiums, but right. we don't like paying off on claims. <laughs> we find it kind of bogs an insurance company down. They said. Too much so, paperwork or something. Yeah, so I wanted to warn everybody, I'm not going to say the name of the company, but don't do business with these people, and I can tell you that they're located in a state, but they're not on a farm. <laughs> Then I went to, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it in the intro, I work a lot at that, that Riviera Comedy Club in Las Vegas, which uh -huh. is a, a nice job. But I'm always depressed when I go to the coffee Why shop. Why is that? Well, there's this lady, I think she lost track of her kid years ago, and she's always wandering through the coffee shop trying to find him, uh -huh. calling out his name. Oh, Kano? Yeah. Kano? <laughs> Kano? <laughs> I could do one more Kino and drag it out even more. I don't think that's possible. Uh, so, uh, now, oh, I got married. Did I tell you I got married? <laughs> yeah, the no. summertime. I didn't tell you that. You got that. married? I, thank you. Yeah, wow. I got married. Well, I'll tell you, see, I had, the last few years, I haven't been doing too well with uh, women. Uh, and you got to think about that it. that hard to believe. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking you would say. <laughs> but, I mean, think about it. What chance do I have if Charlie Sheen had to pay for it? Yeah, I, I don't see, know. See, I don't. So I married the author, Joyce Carol Oates. <laughs> And, well, I see, I had met her uh, uh, when I was doing your show a couple of years uh -huh. ago, and we went out to dinner, and yeah. she was very nice, and after dinner, she started this, uh, I'd like to do something different, she talks like that. <laughs> I'd like to do something different tonight, so I took her down to Tattoos Against Your Will down on, uh, yeah, down you've been there. I've yeah, been down yeah. there, sure. <laughs> so those are my activities well, yeah, well, so that's far, good. yeah. Now, uh, it seems like years and years ago, you were kind of uh, struggling to find oh, struggling a, is right. a gimmick. <laughs> You, you went into like some kind of comic gimmick yeah. that people could identify with and that would just kind of rocket you to superstar. My gimmick was I was looking for a gimmick. Yeah, that's and right. the whole thing did me absolutely no, no good. good oh, I'm sorry to hear so that. I kind of forgot to do it. Now yeah. I'm resuming it again. Yes. You have a gimmick. I have a gimmick. Tonight I am the true stupid stuff comedian. Mm -hmm. Instead of just jokes, there are some stuff that, some things that actually happened. Yeah. One was about the OJ thing. First the OJ all, thing. The, yeah, the OJ <laughs> The trial. OJ thing. Yeah, okay. And, uh, well, true stupid things. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, I thought that Cato was the most important witness right. because he was the last person to see O.J. before the murders, with the exception of Nicole and Ron Goldman. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
I thought, see, I kind of felt sorry for Cato because, you know, really? yeah, he can't get medical insurance because he has a pre-existing condition. <laughs> He's a nitwit. <laughs> <laughs> and this, can I do the true stupid thing? Uh, oh, I think I spit there. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. I, this has actually happened. Guy the pharmacist, my friend Guy yeah. the pharmacist, I said to him, true, uh, what would you think of the verdict? Right. He said, I don't think he did it. I said, what makes you think that? He says, I think if he had done it, he would have said so. <laughs> I said, I don't want you filling any more of my prescription. <laughs> you take your guide dog and <laughs> get out of it. <laughs> oh, uh, can I do one more? Sure, go okay. ahead. Okay, I thought the most stupid thing of my true stupid yeah, stuff category stupid stuff. was the last year, the guy who tried to assassinate Clinton by shooting at the outside of the White House. Yeah. Whoa, what a clever plan. <laughs> well, he's in prison now, you know. Oh, he, yeah. he tried to escape by running in place in his cell. <laughs> <laughs> More applause. Well, you got to have a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Stay there, George. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back, folks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my thanks to George Miller, Shania Twain, Fran Drescher, and a special thanks to the cast of Beauty and the Beast. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night. Goodbye, everybody. Ah, crab cakes. What's the deal? What's the deal on that prince? Where the hell did he go? Did you see him? He just ran out of here. I wanted to introduce him to Ray. You did. <laughs> but he just took off. That crazy nut. Yeah, he's scared. I think he's scared. Is that? I think he's frightened of you me. Think that yeah, I think so. Our next guest is a uh, very funny man and an uh, old uh, friend of ours. He will be performing, or is it he's a very old man and a funny friend? I'm not sure. It works either way, doesn't it? He'll be performing at the Reno Hilton in uh, Reno, Nevada, July 9th through the 14th. Do me a favor. Please welcome back to the program, George Miller. George! Thank you very much. Hey, I've, uh, I've known you a long time. I consider you to be one of my best, uh, oldest, and dearest friends. Is that true? Thank I you. didn't yes, know that. Absolutely, without well, question. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, how you been, buddy? What's going on? I've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've been very well. i got names in the news. Names in the news. You're kind of like of, Mr. Current Events, aren't I'm, you? I'm fresh as today's headlines. Oh, okay. This will be exciting. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, Cato Kalin yeah. complaining because he says because of his uh, testimony in the trial and the deposition, he's being blackballed in Hollywood. He can't get work. Uh, you'll recall before the trial, he was red hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's turned around for him, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's a little different now. And OJ, his video flopped, apparently. Yeah, the one that he produced about he's, his version of the crimes. He's claiming it didn't, but I think it did. And in the video, I thought it was very, very nervy, unbelievable. He says he's going to speak to women's groups. Yeah, right. Yeah, what's he going to tell them? Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got some applause. I've only been out here two minutes. I got applause. Over. How does that happen? You, you want to go home? <laughs> I should quit while I'm ahead. Now, the freeway killer got the lethal injection out in California. Uh, I read about that, yeah. Lot of, he killed a lot of people. I thought he was also nervy. According to the newspapers, his final words were, I don't think capital punishment is the answer. <laughs> yeah, and somebody said to him, it will be for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> the conservative crowd, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then, I know you've had Demi, Demi Moore and Bruce Willis on recently, yeah. Uh, talking about uh, strip, well, pr yeah, pretty recently, talking about uh, uh, strip tease, yeah. and they always talk about their daughter, Rumor, which I had never heard yeah, that name. Yeah, they have three, three daughters. Yeah, yeah, I had never heard uh, the name Rumor, and uh, you know, they have two other kids they mm -hmm. don't talk about, Gossip and Scuttlebutt. I had no idea. I had, uh, 
I had no idea. That's the educational part of my show uh, here tonight. Now, uh, George, do you have like a new gimmick, something you're uh, working on? You know, Dave, gonna... for years I'm the comic who's looking for a gimmick. That's my something gimmick. Put you on Easy Street. Am I yelling? That's my gimmick that I that I'm looking for a gimmick. And tonight I am the getting older comedian. Oh. And I, it's uh, it's not fun getting older. Well, it happens a, to all of us. Doesn't it happens yeah, to all of sure. us. That's exactly right. And what do they always say? It's never too late to start exercising. That's right. Good. I'll wait. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's also a lazy crowd. <laughs> Now, George, uh, I used to jog. Yeah, I know. I, thought, I was yeah. going to say, I thought for a while you actually were jogging. Well, I used to jog three miles a day, uh -huh. and then I thought, well, I'm getting too old for that, so then I started fast walking fast three walking miles. Fast walking just as good, right. I think. Yeah. Well, now I just drive. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet that's um, a pretty sight, too. Yeah. <laughs> you in the well, car. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I've told you this before. Uh -huh. I'm, at the, I'm getting to the age now. I can't always satisfy a woman, but with my behavior, I can usually get her out of a mood. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very beneficial <laughs> asset. It's a very valuable tool. Very to valuable yeah. tool. This. Exactly. Everything works out for the oh, best. Oh, sure. Yeah. And you, the embarrassing thing, you get older, you start repeating yourself. I you know think, that, oh, sure. gosh, I that. told that yeah. story to that guy. What's even worse, you start telling somebody to some, uh, you start telling something to yeah. somebody you know at the time you're repeating yourself, and you don't give a damn. Don't care, no. <laughs> Kind of want to hear it again yourself. Hey, my stories are so interesting. I'll just run them through a second time. That was now, my own personal dumb guy. What is a, uh, uh, what is like, uh, like well, a... I have one more in this section. Mm -hmm. That's what you think. I, <laughs> <laughs> now, getting older, you don't have to be buried. You don't have to be cremated. Right. You can be frozen. Cryogenics. Cryogenics, sure. Now, if you're not hip to this, what happens? You pass away. <laughs> they freeze you. Later on, hopefully, they'll discover a cure for what killed you. That's they'll right, use yeah. that on you. They'll defrost you. You'll be up walking around. <laughs> but, but I was thinking, Tracking suppose... Tracking up the carpet. Right. <laughs> well, I was thinking, suppose what killed you was you froze to death. Yeah, well, then, there you, there you go. There's nothing they could... That ain't gonna help. That ain't gonna help, is it? <laughs> George. By the way, I, can I say one more thing? As be, just to be do on the I, safe side, do I, made I have any out, choice here? I, I made I made out <laughs> I made out a will just to be. Oh, able, I yeah. think that's wise. Well, sure. this might be interesting to you. I, I left everything to Jack Carter. <laughs> Now he doesn't. He's done very well. He he doesn't need it. I just thought it would be a nice gesture. gesture. Oh, okay. yeah. I applaud that. I do. Uh, what, what is a typical day like for you? Oh, it's not good. No, really. I I always uh, I get up. I go to the supermarket, yeah. and I always do the same. Do your shopping. I, well, I, yeah, and I also do the same trick. They say paper or plastic. Yeah. I say paper. Then I get out my wallet. I say real or counterfeit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why don't you leave that to Jack Carter? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll be performing at the Hilton Hotel in Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada. It's a great town. It's a great, little, I have great, town. great memories of being in right. Reno years and years ago. It's a lot of fun, lovely people, beautiful country. Uh, July 9th through the 14th. 14th George, right. always a pleasure to have you Thanks with us. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have you right back. And by the way, when I suggested that Bev Tanner might be smoking crack, of course, <laughs> of course I'm kidding. Yeah. The woman does not smoke crack. Our next guest, however. <laughs> next guest is a very, very funny man who regularly performs at the Riviera in the Las Vegas, Nevada, and at the legendary Ice House in Pasadena, California. Here he is, our old friend, George Miller. <laughs> Thank you very much.
very much. Welcome How back to doing? the program. Thank nice to have much. you back. Thank you. Thank you. You'll never guess what happened. I'm in this hotel that you put me at. Nice right. hotel. Oh, good. I go out of my hotel. I see Bertha, a lady. Have I ever talked to you about her before? I, I don't think so. Uh, my girlfriend, maybe 30 years ago, oh. a little bit of a drama queen. Yeah. Uh, is that what they call it? <laughs> a little I bit guess, dramatic? Sure. Yeah. Just out of the blue, she'd say things like, oh, why was I born to be a writer? <laughs> I say, hey, don't worry, nobody's ever going to know. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of a bittersweet reunion. Was, in between there you, and you go, yeah. there you go. Uh, yeah. How's your summer been? Summer's been very good. Uh, last time I was on the show, I was going to tell you about a typical day, and we never got oh, that, to it. Oh, that's good. A typical day in your life? Sure. Yeah, I think this will be fascinating. I think it, it might be fascinating, yeah. and uh, at least to me. And... Uh, you know, I, I found myself something of a show business phony recently. Oh, I said, no, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, somebody said to me, who, uh, do you have a favorite comic? And I said, well, I have two, uh -huh. uh, Mort Saul and whichever one I'm talking to at the time. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I wanted to tell you, I do have some good points. We went down to, a bunch of us went down to Palm Springs. Oh, that's great. That, was, that would be like a typical day. And by the way, Dave, uh, I don't want to boost myself up, but when I drive, when it's my car, the ladies always ride for free. <laughs> uh huh. So yeah. I wanted to offset my. Yeah, my, I, just, okay. I understand. Sure. So we go down there. We have a Trey great, Gallant. What was that? Trey, Trey Gallant. Well, I think you'll have to clean it up if you try that. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't I'm know not what, sure what it means either. Okay. So we go down to Palm Springs, wonderful time, went to a jazz club, oh, had that's dinner, great. Yeah. dinner at a nice restaurant, mm -hmm. stopped by the Betty Ford Clinic, had a drink down there. And <laughs> really? <laughs> they have a cocktail uh, license? Uh, I think they do. The yeah. liquor license yeah, at the Betty Ford Clinic. I didn't, I didn't know that either. I didn't, no. I did not know that. <laughs> so uh, I come back, and another, I guess I can talk about McDonald's again, because sure. we've been kind of, yeah. this is an absolutely true story, no joke. I go in to the men's room at a McDonald's to wash my hands. There's a guy in the stall. He comes out, McDonald's employee with a hat oh, and everything. Yeah, well, and you know what happened? No. You can guess. He goes back into the restaurant part without washing his Ew. hands. Oh, I swear. God. It's an Ew. absolute true story. Yes, that's right. I felt the same way. <laughs> I go back into the restaurant part. Sure enough, he's right behind the counter. They're serving oh, no. food. Oh, yeah. no. oh. And all I can think of is I just hope he was back in that stall doing drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta think that. <laughs> hope for the best, yeah, right? Yeah, you, you gotta hope for the best. Right. I mean, if you're gonna continue to dine at McDonald's, <laughs> well, you gotta hope for the best there. I, I put him on probation yeah. for a couple of years uh, after that. I had one more thing that sure. on my typical day, and this is that I always enjoy, as you know, Howard Stern. We get him at three oh, yeah, in the you're morning. Oh, a big fan of Howard Stern. I always love Howard Stern. Yeah. Comes at three in the morning right. in L.A. It's it's live, and I have an impression. I'm not an impressionist, but I. I thought I'd, I'd make my debut okay. tonight. Sure. This is my impression of Howard Stern talking to somebody that you talked about earlier. Howard Stern talking to Mother Teresa. Oh, Howard Stern and Mother Teresa. Yeah, okay. Howard talking to Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. So what are you, a C cup? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's, are we done with the typical day? Well, I had one more All thing. Right, this well, is, this is again, it. radio. This is, again, now, this is absolutely true. Again, I did not see this in the paper, but apparently what they're doing, they're working on a pill which would help ladies who have a difficult time achieving orgasm. Mm -hmm. They would be able to use this right. pill and then do that. And I was thinking that's very good. And then I thought, but wait a minute, maybe uh, some women might just pretend to take it. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty confusing. What the hell is that? I don't know what that is exactly. <laughs> Hard to know, isn't it? No idea what that even means. <laughs> no, no, it's pretty. We're, we're both just mystified <laughs> sitting here. We're, 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 we're dopes. I, I, we're you just and I stoops. are just dopes. We're just yeah. right. Uh, well, one of the things that I like to chat with you about, because I know you have a keen eye for the current events, and you are able to insightfully uh, dissect them and then explain where they may be inconsistent. Is that I do that? Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah. Let me tell you a couple names in the news that I've been... Oh, okay. Peter Fonda. Did you see that? Yuli's Peter Fonda Gold? was on the show, He yeah. was on the show? Yeah, I thought that was a good film. I did not see it, but I, I remember in the early 80s, uh, again, this was in the newspaper, he made an announcement, Peter Fonda, that he was going to give up acting gradually. <laughs> and I thought that's very considerate, because I don't think we could take it if he stopped all at once. <laughs> <laughs> 
then uh -huh. I see this, uh, now this Bill Clinton and this Paula Jones business, oh, right? Oh, it's ugly, isn't it's it? It's kind of yeah. an ugly thing. Now, I don't know if it's uh, how much it is. Now, originally, I think they might have upped the ante. Originally, she wanted $700,000 because uh, she said he exposed himself. That's what, yeah. I mean, for 700000 I'd like to take a look at it. <laughs> Some applause. I don't know. Yeah. Any way you look at that, it makes you kind of sick, doesn't it? Kind of sick. Yeah. And there was one thing on tr uh, true stupid stuff. I, you know, I do a lot of true stupid. Absolutely true. On KABC radio, a guy came on one night, and I think he didn't realize what he was saying, and I thought it was very funny. He says, he was talking about the, the Paula Jones incident. He said, this country has a lot of problems. So if Bill Clinton did drop his pants in front of Paula Jones, we should be looking at bigger things. <laughs> Drives you nuts, don't it? Well, it's good to see you, George. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you very much Thank for you. having Everything me. Everything good in your life? Going Everything pretty well? is pretty good. Yeah, all right, not good bad for you, at all. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank George you. Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Gentlemen, that's it for tonight's edition of Broadway Grab Ass. Hope you had a nice time. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Uh, my thanks to George, Bev, and Alicia Silverstone. We'll see you Monday. Tom Snyder is next. Good night, everybody. That ain't perch. Schaefer and myself would like you folks, the American home viewers, to think of tonight's program as our holiday gift oh. to you. Oh. Nice. That is so nice. You are so nice. Our next guest is a uh, very funny man who appears regularly at the Las Vegas uh, Riviera. And on uh, January 17th, he'll be at the Cloverleaf in Bremerton, Washington. Here, ladies and gentlemen, our good friend, a happy man for the holidays, George Miller. George! Hey, you doing, buddy? Thank you. Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the theater. Welcome much. to New York City. Thank Happy you holidays. Are you, are you spending the holidays with family? What do you do? What? No, but I've really been thinking about my... Uh, my father more and more. Uh. My father, and the more the get, older I get, the more goofy I think he really was. Oh, really? You know? Yeah, I think so. Now, what do you think of this? When I was a little kid, I remember him telling me, never read a biography. Hmm. If I ever catch you reading a biography, it's going to be bad. What other people do is none of your business. Well, now, see that? <laughs> <laughs> That seems extreme Something's wrong to me. there. Yeah, yeah so, something. Sure. Then he also told me, he <laughs> also told me, get this, that the Sandman is gay. No. Yes. And to this day, that hangs on. I see Richard Simmons, I sleep like a baby. It's very... <laughs> see, you had used a Richard Simmons joke earlier. I think we did, earlier. yeah. yeah, yeah I think the tree, we, the tree I, has thrown everyone off tonight. Don't, oh. don't take it personally. Okay. Yeah. We're on Simmons overload, I guess. Now, uh, every now and then, you're talking about you're uh, uh, looking for a gimmick. Still looking for yeah, a gimmick, uh, yeah. the comedian with the... Trying to get gimmick. a gimmick. Well, the gimmick is I'm looking for a gimmick. Well, say. that's good. Yeah. Today, I would like to be the, let's see, the guy that uh, uh, he doesn't know what's going on gimmick. Like, uh -huh. uh, there's a guy in Seattle. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm at the uh, Seattle Club, Comedy Club. I couldn't believe this. The guy says, I'm going over my intro. I say, could you say I've been on the David Letterman show 75 times? Right. The guy says, couldn't I just say it once? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. The second thing I really yeah. hate is when, when uh, somebody says you're in denial. That's so arrogant. That's just so arrogant because they don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. Like somebody said to me, right. you're in denial. Sure. I said, no, I'm not. You're an idiot. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, I'm not an idiot. I said, yes, you are, but you're in denial. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Thank you very much. Why don't you, uh, I know you're, uh, you're not clairvoyant yourself, but can you kind of give us an idea what a day will be like for you in 1998? Typical day. Typical day, yeah. I would get up, no matter where I am, I always call my younger brother. Well, that's nice. Did you know I have a younger brother? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the actor Bruno Kirby. <laughs> Bruno Kirby yeah, is he, your younger brother? He's a wonderful kid. I Dave. had no idea. He's been on your show, I yeah, think. Yeah, I never mentioned it. He always encourages me to do acting and impressions rather than the stand-up. He says oh, I need right? to, to branch out. Yeah. And I would like to try, first of all, under his guidance, an impression that I've been working on. This is a guy with amnesia, uh -huh. the guy with amnesia trying to be tough. Okay, okay. Sure. Let me tell you something. You don't know who you're dealing with, and I'm not real sure myself. <laughs> I did a take on that, too. I, I know. I did a take on that. Yeah. Did you get your head in there no, and that's no, why they laughed? Because no, they weren't no. doing much before it. No, okay. I just, <clears throat> we just we have a meeting right after the oh, show. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so that was good. That was the impression. Yeah, but right. also, also the, acting. I've acting. been trying the acting, and I have a short scene. This is mm -hmm. kind of my acting debut. If Try to do mind. this one right into the camera, and oh, oh, good I was, luck. I was going over there, no, so I should no, go over there. No, you were fine. Should I you were fine. No, the problem wasn't here. You were just fine. This is a scene between myself and a waiter, and I do a take in this scene also, so t try, to, try okay. to watch that. Yeah, right this, into the camera on that take. Okay, what mm -hmm. happens is, do I look right here? What happens is... It's like playing roulette. Nobody oh, knows. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever the ball stops, <laughs> you go home a winner. This is, this is when the waiter's too friendly, too familiar. Oh, what yeah. I do, right. I get even more friendly right back. Oh, sure. Welcome to Piper's Coffee Shop. I'll be your waiter. My name is Jim. Well, hi, Jim. I'd like to visit you in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> Would you uh, like a few minutes to decide? No, Jim, I've already decided. <laughs> uh, I think Bruno's oh, on the right thank track. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, well, well, what do you do? Do you read a lot? Are you always uh, reading the newspapers? And I've been reading a lot lately. I've been doing some you research. you got to, to keep up, don't you? I've been doing some research on yeah. Adam and Eve. You know the best thing about Adam and Eve? No. Neither one of them ever said, have your people call my people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so. Did you know, I guess she could push his buttons. They had trouble like any... <laughs> Eve could push Adam's yeah, buttons. Yeah, that's why in my research I found out that... Quite a she, theologian. She, she could... Yeah. <laughs> she, that's directly from the Bible. Yeah. And she could, uh, you know, uh, get his goat, like, uh, after they made love for the first time, he said, how was it? She said, I've had better. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's, that's an awful thing to say, isn't it? It's just a terrible thing. <laughs> Uh, anything else on your mind tonight? I was going to talk about, I, you know, you were talking about uh, the Jerry Seinfeld thing. That's oh, one of that's my, too bad. Yeah, yeah, wrapping up a nice run there. Nine that's years my, favorite of the show. Of yeah. time, my favorite show of all time. My favorite And the second my favorite show is that Benny Him, that guy who touches people and heals them. Have you seen that guy? See, they know no, that. I don't know Benny Him. Well, he touches people. Is this people. the British guy that runs around? No, that's Benny Hill. He's Benny been Hill. dead for several oh, years. Yeah. But. That's all I'm trying to help wherever okay. I can. <laughs> Benny Hem, I'm watching this guy. He touches this woman. She's been arth uh, arthritis, arthritis, arthritis ridden, yeah. bedridden with arthritis sure. for like 30 years. He touches her. She gets up. Not only does she dance all around the stage, she's bopping around. She's right there. And I'm thinking to myself, she's going to be so sore tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Are you yeah. okay? Are you all right? Oh, okay. Because yeah, be I can hardly remember these damn jokes. I tell you, I just don't. Uh, hey, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Thanks now, listen, wait a minute. You're going to be yeah. somewhere. Bremerton. Uh, at the Cloverleaf. Yeah, the Cloverleaf. That's, yeah, I that's think that's a comedy club. That's timber country up there, isn't it? Uh, I don't know what that yeah, means. Oh, yeah. Yes. They'll have you for lunch, buddy. Okay. George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. this before we continue uh what's his name victor hugo i didn't mean what's his name victor hugo wrote it <laughs> les, les miserables uh, was written in 1862 mm -hmm. was written in 1862 took place when paul do you have any idea when the story no. takes place 1832 uh -huh. 1832 french revolution yeah 
1832. No, no, French Revolution? I don't know. 1789. Oh, well. So I was, I was completely wrong. Yeah. And, and nothing, <laughs> had nothing to do with the French Revolution. Actually, it was written uh, nearly at the time of uh, the American Civil War. Is that right? Yeah, to place that in your timeline that you're drawing there on your wall in your den. <laughs> it's the magic markers, Larry. Our next guest is a a very funny man who regularly uh, performs at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles and also at the Riviera in Las Vegas, Nevada. Please welcome our old friend, George Miller. George! Thank you. Also Always a the, pleasure to have you here. The L.A. Cabaret I was also going to mention that I worked there also. You worked there? Yeah, a funny thing happened. I was supposed to do, I guess, seven minutes. And uh, just before I came out, Zoe Friedman asked me, one of your staff members said, could I possibly do eight minutes? Mm-hmm. Boy, what a sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> George, you look great. You're uh, dressed for spring here. And, I am? Uh, yeah. What, what's new in your life? What's I, going hey, on? Hey, good news, you guys. I got back $8,000 on my income tax. Wow. <laughs> The bad news is I'm going to prison. Ah. <laughs> How do you think you'll do in prison, George? Oh, I think I'll be do pretty good. I think I'll do okay in prison. <laughs> uh, anything else going on? Well, you know, last time I was on the show, you always review your tape. And, man, I just thought I was cracking up. I blanked out on a joke, and I thought I got to get some professional help. I oh. went back to budget psychiatrist, $3 a visit. You uh-huh. remember sure. years ago, yeah, I used to, yeah, I think so. it's in downtown Los Angeles, a lot of <laughs> cut rate businesses down oh, there. No. Yeah, in fact, right across from budget psychiatrist, you got the Ratso Rizzo Health Club. So, you know, that's, uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I never. Who spoke at your high school graduation when you went to high school? Wasn't it somebody? That... Oh, that was uh, Dr. Beecham, the credit dentist. Yeah, that's, that's right. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, by, by the way, by the way, I never make a reference past 1965. <laughs> well, I'm I just sorry. thought you'd like to know that. Uh, so how are you doing with, I know you're always, as a comedian, you've got to try and find a way to distinguish yourself from the pack. Have you found a, a, a gimmick yet? Somebody? Well, I, you know, I'm the comic who's always looking for yeah. a gimmick. Well, that's, that's, that's your gimmick. Yeah, that's right. the gimmick, and, uh, you know, that's really caught on fire. Mm-hmm. That's it's really, uh, <laughs> they won't leave me alone. And tonight I am the, I wanted to be the presumptuous comedian tonight. I, I'm not sure I know what Well, that that's, uh, I don't want to seem arrogant, but I have done a lot of shows over the years, and I wanted to give advice to young performers. Oh, sure. A lot of performers would want to be on this show or other shows. For some reason, they can't get on because the producer, the segment unit, uh, whoever books the talent, they right. just don't like them. We've all been through sure. this. Not their cup of tea. They just don't like you. Young performers, hang on. These people who don't like you, if you will be patient, they will eventually move on. They'll go to other shows. They'll go elsewhere. They will be replaced by new people who don't like you. (laughs) That's sound advice. Also, names in the news. Oh, I, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I was surprised you didn't make any George Michael. You didn't well, talk we about... Well, we did. We kind of touched on that, I you, so, so to speak. Uh, oh, you, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see yeah, it. I guess I missed right. that. I don't think anything's going to happen to the guy. I no. think no fine, no probation. You know how it is. He's uh, famous. He'll grease the right palm. He'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just as good as his. <laughs> And my setup was shorter. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's I get true. style points. That's now that's listen, true. George. Uh, I had one more. Oh. How do you? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to talk about uh, my my favorite thing of the names in the news for the whole year of last year was this Janet Jackson in USA Today. Yeah. And she came out and she said that she had to put her career on hold for a while. There was hmm. some kind of problem, and it was a great quote. She said, "I had to take care of myself." before I did anything else. And, you know, I think that's very common among famous show business people. They keep forgetting about themselves. Uh, so, uh, uh, George, why don't you, if you can, and I've asked you to do this in the past, and I don't know if you're, yeah. you're too modest or self-conscious or whatever, but if you Probably can. Probably too stupid. <laughs> take, us, take us through a day, you know, let, as, if, as we were, uh, like we're following you around. Well, I had, so, I had a little bit of a health problem recently. I had to take a, I would get up, okay, I would take a prescription drug. Uh-huh. It was a good pain reliever, <laughs> but if you took too much, it would give you a buzz, like oh, one will help your back ache, five will make you call people. Yeah. <laughs> All people. 
Now, here's what I do. Now, you know, I know what you like to do. You've always told everybody on weekends and stuff, you love to go to bars and pick fights. <laughs> I, I don't know why. <laughs> he always says that. Now, I, that's dangerous. Yeah, See, I know. I've given listen, that up. Listen. I don't do that well, much anymore. Well, you might want to do what I've been doing the last three or four <laughs> years, okay? Now, I do this the last three or four years, maybe two, three times a week. Not every day. I get up. I take a shower. I get dressed, maybe a coat and a tie even. Oh, my. Then I go down, and I put myself in a nursing home. <laughs> That seems about right, doesn't it's it? very relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Later in the day, I have myself released. I go home, I have a cigarette, I go right to bed. That's good. <laughs> it's a full day. It's a full life. Can I talk about the uh, president? Uh, for, I have two president things I wanted to discuss, if uh, you don't quickly, mind. Because I, I am get always... To them quickly. Well, we have I got other, to... Other he, guests, he does that. <laughs> <laughs> that harmony's not coming back, no, is he? he won't be back okay. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they got this Bill Clinton on the State of the Union. It was a great speech, I thought, even though I'm not a big fan. He says, look at the record. Uh, uh, drug use went down. Mm. Crime went yeah. down. Unemployment went down. Monica, look at the record. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's probably a joke that every comedian in the country who saw that speech thought of. I think I'm the first guy to get it on national television. Talk about making your family proud. I, on, buddy. Uh, I, I'm sorry, we got to go here now. Oh, we got to go? Yeah, you want to mention you're going to be Oh, somewhere? I'm going to be at the uh, Ice House in Pasadena starting on May 6th. Mm-hmm. The, so I hope everybody can come out and see right, me good. there. Nice so. to see you again, Nice George. to see you. Thanks George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We're right back with Matthew Ryan. funny man who performs regularly at the uh, Riviera Comedy Club in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tomorrow night, he will be at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, California. Here he is, the always lovable George Miller. George? Can I make an announcement oh, yeah, before like we even begin? Oh, well, yeah. I, I hope it's wanna... not a cheap plug. It's, it's not, not a cheap plug. Not a cheap All plug. Right, I just ahead. want everybody to know that what I'm getting from my appearance tonight yeah. is spit compared to what you're getting. So I just thought. <laughs> and it's unfair because likely you will be the single most entertaining feature of the program. Oh, I God, I hope that's it hasn't true. happened in 18 years, <laughs> but tonight could be the night. I have some very interesting... I hope Steve Martin is watching this show Oh, tonight. he's funny. I love now, Steve Martin. I, I don't claim to have known him. I had a few little conversations with sure. him 30 years ago. I run into him at a drugstore about two weeks ago. Mm. I couldn't believe it. His face lit up when he saw me. He mm. said, I'm one of his favorite comics. He always knows all my jokes. He never misses one of my appearances on your show. That's great. Very, very flattering. That's terrific. But then he kept calling me Lou. <laughs> Well, your name is not Lou at all, is it? No, <laughs> I guess it was some kind of one of those <laughs> mix-up mix or something. <laughs> mix can, up. I, can I tell you, you one... You've never worked under the name Lou, have you? Uh, I did one time, but that's another story that I have no punchline <laughs> right. for. It. But, but, well, you didn't have a partner named Lou, is it? I, oh, it was Lou Abbott, yes. <laughs> it was a long time. I, don't know. I was going to tell you a story, and I don't think I've ever like told stories. you this off or on stage. This is another famous good. actor. I'm not going to re- reveal the guy's name. All right, sure. He was on... It might some, be embarrassing. It, was, it would be okay. embarrassing a little bit. This was about a year ago. He was on first, of course. I was going on second. On, on I did, this show here? Yeah, he was yeah. coming to talk to you. What was his I, name? Do you remember? I can't remember his name. It might have been Lou. I don't know for <laughs> sure. I, no. It's a famous guy. Yeah. So uh, he does his deal with you. I'm not watching. I'm backstage. Mm-hmm. He comes off. He's very friendly toward me. Right. We have a nice little chat. Mm-hmm. We're babble, babble. Nice, nice. And now, I'm always interested in these big movie stars. I right. say, well, now that you've had your conversation with Dave, what are you going to do now? Mm-hmm. He says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going back to my hotel room. I'm going to get into the shower and try to wash off the stench. Wow, I did. That seems I, a little what, harsh, I, doesn't well, it? Well, I, I thought, did, was the audience not good? Know. Did I'm Dave just, say something offensive? This, no. That could happen. Good right? sure it's happened could before, happen. yeah. Right? 
It's going to happen here in a minute. It too. might happen in a minute. <laughs> it's going to happen again. <laughs> Got to look forward to. Anyway, I didn't get to see the show that uh -huh. night, except right. for my part, of course. <laughs> and uh, I always was curious about this. About six months later, I'm going into a restaurant in Los Angeles at lunchtime. He's coming out <laughs> again, very, very friendly. We have a nice chat. I said, well, now, what are you going to do now? You've had your lunch here today. What are you going to do now? He says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going back to my house in Bel Air. I'm going to get into the shower and try to wash off the stench. So, so he just, he just nuts, I guess he just does that yeah. after uh, every activity. So, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Was it, Maybe it was just me. Was I don't it, know. Was it Bruce Willis? Was that it who it was? It wasn't Bruce Willis. No, no, no. I, won't, I won't. It might have been that Michael Keaton. I'm not sure. Oh, Michael it might Keaton. Have, sure. It might have been. I don't, I don't remember for now, sure. Now, I don't want to uh, uh, bring up, uh, and if this is none of my business, yeah. but, you know, uh, tell it's me. It's not. Um, I think the last time you were here, you were talking about you'd gone, oh. you were going to a psychiatrist because, I, I don't know. I well, mean, we all need guidance. There's nothing to be embarrassed that's by. That's true, and I'm t I'm t I don't want the, the audience to feel sorry for me, but at times I have had a rough life. When I was one year old, I had a stroke. <laughs> It's rare. I, oh, it doesn't happen much. Oh, it was it? terrible. I had to learn how to crawl all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, that doesn't so, take a lot of courage. So, <laughs> so it's a lovely story. And Thank it's you very room. much. Yeah, uh -huh. So I went back, and we started to do this the last time we got sidetracked. I went back to budget psychiatrist, three bucks a visit. Oh, this oh is you get what you pay for. I would for. think so, sure. <laughs> I'm threatening suicide. He's saying you got to do what you got to right. do. <laughs> this guy is so stupid. Well, uh, I can't get a straight answer out of the guy. I said, could I be passive aggressive? He said, well, yes and no. <laughs> so, you know what my problem is? Uh -uh. Besides the obvious <laughs> yeah, one. All right. Yeah. Besides the wardrobe? I, I get, well, be okay. yeah. <laughs> What would they be doing if you shower. didn't have a show? I'm trying to wash the wow. stench off. <laughs> they boo you and you're the I know, host. I'm sure I'm that used is to it, embarrassing. Sure. So anyway, what we talk? Oh yeah, so I know what's going on. I got these goofy questions in my head. Maybe you and the audience could kind of help me uh, out. I'll do and what we I can. Could try to yeah. try this. And these questions, they're stupid questions, and I can't find the answer. When sliced bread first came on the market, what did people say it was the greatest thing since? <laughs> See? See? I got more of these. They're, they're going uh, the wrong crowd. Who do they get in with? Yeah, exactly. See? See? Yeah. See, you're laughing, but I know you, you hate bits no, like this. I know you. Yeah. yeah. Here's the big one. Here's the big one. I've, this was for six months now. If you homeschool your kid and he's absent, where the hell is he? Uh, George. Thank you very much. <laughs> You've been watching the old George Carlin tapes, haven't you? I did not. <laughs> I did not steal any material. Uh, all right. Let's, Just shot. Let's tell the oh. folks where you're going to be, you my friend. You're going to be at the tomorrow. Laugh Factory in yeah. Hollywood, California. When does that take place? I'll, oh, be, I'll be there tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yes. We'll travel safely, George. Okay. Have a great Thanks summer. a lot. Good Thank to you see very you. Much. George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Thank back you. Sean Lennon. Next guest is a very, uh, uh, very uh, nice man, a very uh, f uh, funny man. He's uh, unique, I, I believe, in the world of comedy. He's been working very hard all day to think up uh, funny things to say to you people here tonight. So, so be very, you know, nice and uh, respectful and enjoy yourself when he comes out. I, I think he's, uh, he's unusual, don't you think? I, he is. He's just downright peculiar, this guy. <laughs> but, you know, nice man nonetheless, and he has nice things to say about you people. He'll be performing at the Pavilion in Bremerton, Washington on October 30th and at Washington State University on uh, the following day, October 31st. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the always entertaining George Miller. George, come on out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I always forget the balcony. Hello to the balcony, okay? I always forget. I always forget. Okay. So I'm watching this uh, uh, ad for Aleve, the all-day painkiller, and the guy's going to take the Aleve, and then his friend says, well, aren't you going to take Tylenol? And the guy says, well, no, because if I took a couple Tylenol now, in three or four minutes, or in three or four hours, I might have to take a couple more, see? And I'm thinking, how lazy is this guy? <laughs> Maybe his pain is caused from inactivity. <laughs> I don't have much room to talk because I've always been an inactive person all my life. What do they always say? It's never too late to start exercising. Good. I'll wait. <laughs> I've said many times on the show before, I'm getting to the age now, I can't always satisfy a woman, but with my behavior, I can usually get her out of the mood. <laughs> oh, here's another dumb commercial I forgot. Amodium AD makes your first attack of diarrhea your last. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? It kills you? Yeah, and Dave mentioned Hooters, and I live close to Santa Monica, and they were going to put a Hooters in the mall over there, and a councilman was really against it, and he had a great quote. He says, we don't want fraternity boys and dirty old men coming to Santa Monica to ogle young women. Well, let me ask the councilman a question. Where are we supposed to go? <laughs> Hey, you know, I saw Monica Lewinsky's dad. He, she, uh, he was on Larry King, you know, and he is, I guess, a physician in uh, Beverly Hills, but apparently not a brain surgeon. <laughs> and, yeah, he said he thought Ken Starr was bugging his phone because he kept hearing this tap, tap, tap. Hey, nitwit, that's known as call waiting. <laughs> And about a year ago, I was talking about Paula Jones. Now I guess it's, they fl it fluctuated. She wants $1 million because she said uh, Clinton exposed himself. Let me tell you something. For $1 million, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> I don't care how crooked it is. I don't... <laughs> If a river runs through it, I'll take a gander. I don't... <laughs> if a river runs through it, I have no idea what that means. I got to laugh one night, I continue to say it. I have no... Bob Dole was on the show the other night, and he, when he was running against uh, Clinton, he said, uh, uh, since Clinton's been president, there's been more illegal drug use. Does that have anything to do with anybody? Hey, you want to get high tonight? Gee, I don't know. Who's in office? <laughs> That's okay, I only got one minute. That's okay. I just, uh... Hey, they got some stupid public service announcements about drugs. I saw this one. Don't take medicine in the dark. I said, well, who the hell would do that? Ooh, time for my codeine. Lights out. <laughs> uh, I think I'll quit on that one. I'm going to sit over there because I'm tired. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What our money's worth out yeah. of here. Well, he gave me the one minute yeah, nice mark, so I, I know I did my last I'll tell you time. what, George, yeah. let's do a uh, commercial break, and then we'll chat when we come oh, back. Okay, All right, we'll be you. right back here with uh, Mr. Comedy, Mr. Showbiz, George Miller. Nice job, George. Very funny. I like the uh, 
Thank you. you look good tonight. I like thank the you. sweater. Thank you, Eric. I love your champagne-colored hair. It's oh, beautiful. thank you very much. Can I mention one thing on, the, on those jobs that you plug? Ross Schaefer. Up there in Washington. Ross, Ross Schaefer, Schaefer will yeah. be uh, with me up there. And when Ross and I are together on any comedy bill, always the same thing. Sleeping bags in front of Ticketmaster. So just, just remember that. <laughs> Say good night, George. Good night, George. See ya. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Give us a kiss, cowboy. Okay, very excited about our next guest. In addition to being a very funny uh, comedian, uh, uh, this man is responsible for coining a couple of phrases that I use frequently here on, on the show all the time. Oh, yeah? I just want to g give credit where credit is due. Uh -huh. Here's the first one. You probably heard me say this a lot. In fact, this time of year is when I usually say this one. In Hollywood, Oscar is king. He came up with that? He, he coined that phrase. Cool. Yeah. And the, the, the other one, which I use year-round, it's a perennial. I wouldn't give your troubles to a monkey on a rock. Okay, all right. He came up with that. He's a wordsmith, isn't he? Get him out of here. Our next guest is a very funny man who regularly performs at the Las Vegas Riviera. On April 10th, he'll be appearing at the San Manuel Casino in San Bernardino, California. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, George Miller. <laughs> Good. Actually, in Hollywood, Oscar uh, is No, king. that's not. I don't think that's mine. And the monkey on the rock, rock is uh, a Don Rickles. Well, then get the hell out of here. I'm that. going. <laughs> George, how have you been? I've been pretty. I got a new. Uh, can I talk about my new. Uh, What's well, uh, a guy I used to have. Remember Bullets de Blasio, my, my agent of many years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I kind of do, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, you remember. Paul? I was. Yeah. I represented me, too. I, is that right? Yeah. yeah I was he's, with, he's with yeah. almost everybody, yeah. And uh, I had very him, powerful man, very wasn't? very yeah. powerful. Both. And I had him for a while, and then I went to a guy for years who just did comedy clubs, mm -hmm. and then I got reunited with Bullets. Oh, good. And Bullets has comedy clubs, casinos, wow. corporate shows, colleges, and it has come together. I have never been out of work in so many different areas. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> good for you. Very happy man. Thank you. Thank you. Some people <laughs> applauded for that. Did you see the uh, Monica Lewinsky uh, thing last night? <laughs> See any of that? Yeah, I, I did watch that. I thought it was interesting that she said that, um, uh, well, she said she's no longer in love with uh, Bill right, Clinton, right. but that's okay because Geraldo still is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that, guys? <laughs> Can you say kiss ass on this show? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay? believe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he claims that Clinton watches his show a lot. Geraldo's all the time screaming about uh, President Clinton. He, he wanted to give him a hug at one point. That's right. Yeah. I love you. I want to hug you, Mr. Yeah. President. Well, anyway, he said that uh, uh, sometimes Clinton watches his show, so right. I did some investigation. I'm the investigative comic tonight. That's my gimmick. Your, yeah. And I found out that sometimes when Clinton was with Monica, they watched. Well, actually, really? she was just able to listen. Ah. But still... <laughs> That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I had one more investigation thing. Yeah, that what it, is that? Well, that was, I read this book, uh, The Dark Days of Camelot, Seymour Hersh. It was about the right. Kennedy administration. Sure. And Seymour Hersh claims that Kennedy had women come to the White House to see him. I heard that. And later they were threatened. If they said anything about it, they would be put into an insane asylum. Oh my God. Pretty, pretty scary. So I did some research. I found out that Richard Nixon uh -huh. also had women come to the White House to see him. They had to be recruited from an insane asylum. <laughs> sure. More applause. Three applauses so far. Three applauses. And it's only three minutes. Stop that. that. Oh, sorry. Now, you do, I know you're not an impressionist. You don't really do the impressions, but you have, you have one for us? Well, I have two. One is based on one I've done more than once on your show, but uh -huh. it kind of leads into the second one. This is Dave in prison. Right. Okay, this is Dave in prison. Uh, by the way, I'd like to point out right now, I've never been in prison. Well, okay. This is, yeah. this is Dave in prison. How much time we got? How are we doing on time? 
I don't get that. I don't even. I don't get it either. David I don't. President. But thank you. Is that insulting? Should it be insulting? No, that's not that? insulting at all. You're just Flattering. inquiring of the warden how much yeah. time you got. I don't, I don't think yeah. you do very well in prison. I actually was in prison. You were once. in prison. I was in prison one time, and it was the most one of the most embarrassing, humiliating <laughs> things. I don't know if I've ever told you <laughs> about this. Have, which no. when they put me in solitary confinement, right. I tell you, I wanted to go crawl off into a hole someplace. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, Wait, have I we had more. the Clinton impression no, now we, or not? We haven't, because, okay. because I... Because uh, I'm kind of under the impression maybe we did have the impression. Well, uh, we, uh, this is the, 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 what do you call it, the preceding thing, your deal in prison. This is Bill Clinton. I've been working on this, too. It's uh-huh. not real good yet, but wait, uh, Bill Clinton in prison. I didn't have sex with them. They had sex with me. <laughs> Bill Clinton in prison. Thank you very much. I got something else? I had one thing I wanted to mention. I wanted to, to mention a place that I worked at. Bullets de Blasio got me the job. Uh-huh. was John Asquaga's Nugget over in Sparks, Nevada. Sparks, know, Nevada. You love Reno. Is that where they Reno. have a legalized prostitution? That, well, I don't know about that. Oh, know come on. You that. know about I that. no idea You know about exactly that. what I'm talking about. All I know <laughs> yeah. is I love John Asquaga's Nugget because he has his name in the title. Right. Yeah, I think that's very John good. Asquaga is the guy's name? Yeah, and it's the, Nugget. Yeah, now, yeah. it reminds me of something that you probably remember I used to talk about a lot. Famous restaurant in Beverly Hills, Lowry's the Prime oh, that's right. Rib. Yeah. Right, not sure. Lowry's Prime no, Rib. Lowry's, Lowry's the, the Prime, Prime rib. rib. I was only in there, I think, one time with my brother-in-law, the transvestite. <laughs> Your sister is married to a transvestite? I don't know. I'm just making this crap up as I go along. I have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, George. Good to see you again, buddy. Life Thank you very you good. much. Thanks a lot. You're going to be in San Bernardino at the uh, San Manuel Casino. Yeah, that's a Native American uh, casino. April 10th. Well, have a April nice time 10th. out Thank there. You Thank much. you very much Thanks for being here. George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. We'll see you tomorrow night with Chaz Palm and Terry, uh, CBS Mailbag, and uh, Jeff Altman, uh, Everclear. Good night, Monica. Kilts are not pants. Party down! Me that. Ho! In the house! Our next guest is a, a very funny comedian, and he uh, performs regularly at the Riviera in Las Vegas, Nevada. On March 17th, you can see him live at the San Manuel Indian Casino in Highland, California. Here's our good friend, little Georgie Miller, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good to have you with us. Well, Welcome I, back to the show. Yeah. Happy New Year. Thank you. I have to tell you something because it's really embarrassing because last What's the time. Matter? Well, What's I the got problem? the eyebrow. I had the eyebrow ticks last time. So, no, <laughs> the, my, uh, my eyebrows were ticking, you know. Oh, my and God. It's good. It's the only exercise I ever got. It's okay. It doesn't make any difference. It's all right. <laughs> you. It's, well, if they start ticking, tell me and I'll hold them. I'll hold them. And <laughs> right. at the same time, give the balcony the finger. All right. You, hey, the stop that. No, I won't do that. You one. are more than a I, dream date, I, my I friend. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, now, I'm glad you're here because oh. there's a lot going on. We're in a mm. period of transition. I wonder and if a little rum would get this up on its feet. <laughs> well, it might. But uh, yeah, I want yeah. to know what you thought. Oh, I'm sorry. I had some kind of a belch. Don't, I don't know what don't it was. Don't hurt yourself. I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> Are you traveling with a nurse now? I, I got a nurse with me. Uh, <laughs> what do you what do you think of uh, the current events? Let's well, just throw it open. To current I, events. Um, again, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I have no. I'm always behind. I got no uh, Bush Gore jokes. I got a couple <laughs> things on Clinton. I have an Eisenhower routine oh, yeah. that might be <laughs> that might be uh, applicable. Well, yeah, but, let's hear it. Well, I don't really have that. I just made that as a little. Oh, I see. Yeah, That's a little gifts. Yeah. <laughs> so is, are they ticking? Yeah, yet? they are. are. They ticking all. Yeah. Get yeah. some band aids no. or something. I don't know what. To, Looks like you got a couple uh, of right. AA batteries hooked I, up to them. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I want to tell you about this Clinton. Here's the way I got it figured. Eight years, no matter what he does, the Republicans say he's awful. The Democrats say he's great. So uh, the Republicans would say, he lied to us for seven months. Yeah. And then the Democrats would say, the eighth month, he rested. I do a little animation uh, to try to save it. I don't know. It's it frightening me. It is, oh, and I got, can I do one? I don't want to encroach on your territory, but I got a, a Clinton classic of my own. Oh, October oh, 8th. That's okay. That, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But unlike you, I don't call it a Clinton classic. I call it what it really is, an excuse for using old, worn-out material. <laughs> so that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not illegal. I know. You can do right. it. It's a repeat joke. Thank you. Now, what I did was, I, uh, with Monica, was interesting, but I, my favorite... Is this the Clinton classic now? This is coming up right now. This okay. is the preface to the Clinton right, classic. Okay. Yeah. It's quite lengthy. It'll take the rest of the show. And That's no, what you think. This is, about, uh, this is Paula Jones. I was my favorite part. She gets $850,000 because she said Clinton exposed himself... To her. Let me tell you something. For eight hundred and fifty thousand, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> was he was he supposed to do that? He jump right in. You know, he's uh, also on that same subject. We we have it's kind of delicate, but you know, some couples <laughs> and some uh, some some men have pet names for the guy's uh, manhood. You know that? Oh, sure. You know all about oh, that. Yeah, you know sure. all about that. Yeah, yeah there's right this ninety-three-year-old man in my building. He, you know what he what he calls it? It's uh, carpool lane. Yeah, he knows it's there, but he can't use it. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, not that music. Yeah, Don't really you need that music. I had enough of that. I had, you know, Paul was with my uh, old manager, Bullets de Blasio. No, I didn't know that. Yes, that's exactly true. Bullets, of course, uh, I was at the fam big family reunion uh -huh. recently. And, um, of course, my dad, I think you know this, the audience says my dad's the famous writer, Horton Foote. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's true, yeah. My real name is uh, Horton Foote Jr., but Bullets decided I should change it. Bullets is a, a great manager. He is got me right? the relocation camp circuit in 1943, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I've been with, been with him many, many times. Yeah, anyway, right. so the family re reunion was great. My cousin is there, my second cousin, 20 years old. I feel sorry for the guy because it's like he's got his future ahead of him. He, oh, he's full of indecision. Sure. This guy can't decide which he likes better, crank or crack. He just doesn't know. He just doesn't know what he what he, he should do. He needs some counseling. He needs some uh, some counseling. Yeah. yeah. And my sister was there, and my sister, you know that sibling, you get that sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry. Yeah. Sure, yeah. No matter what I say, I'm trying to brag about my romantic conquests. I oh. says, uh, all I can tell you is I've never had any complaints. Yeah. She says, oh yeah, like anybody that desperate is gonna bitch. <laughs> I think she's onto something. Oh man. Man. <laughs> Well, I tried to impress her. I said, you know, a while back, I, 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 I had a near-death experience. She said, you should try again. Maybe you can go all the way next time. Uh, that, uh, that's just, that's yeah, awful. That is terrible. Yeah. heaven's sake. Did you know gotta... she, she was a base? Oh, excuse me. She was, <laughs> she was uh, I want you in this, too. <laughs> it's not apparent. <laughs> uh, she was a former major league baseball groupie. That's that. her that claim right? to fame. She says she once did some sort of a hand manipulation on Kurt Flood. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. I, I don't know what that what means. What the hell has gone I, wrong? What is yeah, wrong with you? I hope that was when he was still alive. That's oh, all I know. Good Lord. Is it ticking? Are they ticking? Uh, yes, they are. They're driving me crazy. The Energizer they're like, Bunny. They're driving me crazy. Now, George, uh, they're okay now. They're do you have, uh, uh, I know for a, a long time you're working on uh, gimmicks for the career. I got, oh, I got a great gimmick. I'm the impersonation comedian. I wanted oh, to do you. I wanted to do you. An impersonation of me. Well, I used to do an old one on Dave, Dave in prison. Uh, uh, huh. How, how much time we got? How are we doing on time? That's, a, that's, a good, that's an old one I've done. Okay. That, that, that's another Clinton classic. Yeah. yeah right. Right. All right. This is... Uh, hang on. I'm talking too fast. You're fine. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. Now, this is Dave and us uh, talking to any guests he's ever had on the show and then what I think is going on in Dave's head right. at the time. Okay. okay. Now, let me reset oh, the... Uh, I, okay. okay. <laughs> This is your impression of me yes. talking to any guest on yeah. the show yeah. and what is really going through my mind. That is exactly right. That okay. is exactly right. 
Okay, so uh, we'll start now. I'll go this way when, I, when I'm talking as you. So uh, where, uh, where are you from originally? Well, Dave, I come from Siberia, Russia. Oh, that's beautiful country over there. Did you have a nice summer? <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. That was pretty big hit. Yeah, I'm really doing pretty good. What other subjects we got? We got the TV subject. We got the TV. Yeah, hurry up! I'm getting a little sleepy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was watching this guy from the ACLU. That stands for All Criminals Love Us. Really? Is that and, what it is? Uh, yeah. That's Are you true. sure about I, that? I, I, I swear, research this. Hmm. I don't know how you feel about capital punishment. Anytime there's a guy on death row, I'm hoping and praying at the last minute he'll receive word from the governor, uh -huh. and the word will be goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what I saw? <laughs> I got to get it all in. Yeah. You know what I saw was this Whose Line Is It Anyway? Well, it's a big yeah. show. Oh, it's Drew great, Carey. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's just a. Uh, yeah, it's uh, improv, a notch above charades. And uh, <laughs> I had. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if I can do one more. There's a, one more kind of impression I was going to do on drag. Everybody knows Dragnet, even if you're young, because they got it on, on Nickelodeon or dragnet. something. The Dragnet. Yeah, the Dragnet. Joe Friday. Joe, Fr Joe Friday was always calm, cool, and collected. But if he got mad, he would sneer and talk real fast. I see. So, like, one time he was questioning this guy, and the guy was being kind of evasive. And Friday says to him, he says, oh, don't give me that. I've looked up your record. If it weren't for prison food, you'd have starved to death. <laughs> George Miller, you ladies and gentlemen. I got more. I got some more stuff. He'll be at the San Manuel Indian Casino in Highland, California. That's March 17th. We'll be right back. Nice to have you here, George. Good to see you. You're in luck. It's a big, big night. We're always very happy when our uh, next guest is on the program because he is, uh, in a word, he is um, peculiar. Ah. <laughs> He's a very funny guy, a good friend of ours, and you'll be able to see him performing live beginning August 20th uh, at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And Las Vegas is lovely in August. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, George Miller. Welcome back. Ow. Okay. Oh, wait. All right. <laughs> You look great. Wait, I, wait, you look fantastic. I, I, I couldn't hear. Thank you back there. But yeah. did you say I was peculiar? Yes, I like did. Like you're Mr. Normal? Well, yeah, no, right, right. We're not right. debating that. That's not why we're here. <laughs> now, let me flip. How have you been? Fine. I've been good. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Can I even say stuff before we start the uh, alleged interview? Would sure. that be all right? Sure. Whatever you want okay. to do. Okay, because I will be. I want you to consider the next two and a half minutes all yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, I, I didn't think I'd get that long. Uh, anyway, uh, I know you're going to say this at the end, but they'll be going crazy wondering for I will be at the Cerritos Center for the Performing Arts on September 9th with the, oh, comi right with the comics of late performing night. Performing yeah. Arts September I, I know you're going to do it, but yeah. just in case. And I have another plug, and, and this concerns the fact I will be... You know, I love pool. Pool is my like all fun. Yeah, I love pocket billiards, and I'm going to Dr. Q's in Seattle. Right. This is all plugs so right. far, right? Yeah, but somebody said to me, well, do you like pool better than sex? Oh. Well, and I said, well, question. no, because with sex, you don't have to keep one foot on the floor. Yeah, see, that's right. So. <laughs> it's a billiard crowd. It's a billiard crowd. Am I drinking this correctly? It's all yours. Help yourself. Now, how, how have you been? You look like you I've been, pretty I've good. been good. Now, another thing I do a lot of times that we didn't mention, I work a lot of times at that laugh factory for that Jamie. That Jamie is a very nice you know, guy. Do I know Jamie? Yes. In, in fact, he waited outside your house for two and a half hours one day and was not invited in. 
Uh, yes. Seems about right. Yeah, well, I think so, if, if you know Jamie. Yeah. Jamie, there's something wrong with this guy. I really? like the guy, but uh -huh. some, he wins the California State Lottery. Is that right? Yeah, he won the – so a few days later, I said, Jamie, remember last week you won the $18 million yeah. in the lottery? And Jamie said, refresh me. <laughs> Can I say hello to some people? <laughs> sure, Would you mind? <laughs> Listen, my uncle Paul says. You, you know this is not rehearsal. Well, <laughs> is there a rehearsal at all? <laughs> I didn't know there was a rehearsal. I, I thought you could have maybe cue cards sometimes. Like, I'm getting old. I can't remember something. Who, who would you like to I say want hello to? I want to say my uncle Paul, who you know through mm -hmm. correspondence, had a heart problem. Oh, I hope he's he's Oregon right. House, California. Hello, Paul. Paul admonished me last time I was on the show, and I'm doing it again. I don't listen. Mm -hmm. He says, give Dave a chance <laughs> to ha have a conversation. That's right. I say, Paul, look, Dave's been here 20 years. I get two and a half minutes, and you think Dave is feeling left out. <laughs> now, George, you were... Uh, I, I got one more thing. Mm -hmm. I, wait a minute. I'm sorry. i got to get all this in. All right, this, okay. this is very important. Okay, okay. You know so you can come back some other time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to congratulate you on the Emmys. I wanted to mention, because I haven't been here because I had to cancel one time, and you had a great article. I know you didn't read it. You don't read stuff about yourself. In the TV Guide, remember the big picture about two months ago? Oh, complete uh, non-response. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. I, I should, shouldn't have brought that up. Anyway, the... <laughs> yeah. now let's talk some more about Uncle Paul. <laughs> Or Dr. Hughes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. Well, I had jokes for those. Okay. I had jokes for those. So the article is just the guy is flattering to you. It's a nice he, article. He's gushing. Yeah. He may have been flaming. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know if one man has ever liked another man that much <laughs> unless. I don't know for sure. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Now, he didn't exactly say this, but he indicated in his flattery that you were... Uh, a pioneer. Oh, I forgot to tell you about my eyebrows, Mike, because I got the eyebrow ticks. I forgot. Yeah, my eyebrows. I got. The, well, eyebrows? you know that I tell, told you the last time, but you, you have forgot. some kind of a tick. Is I got right? kind of a tick, kind but the, twitch. yeah, they twitch. But the doctor says it's good. It's the only exercise I ever got. So oh, well, that's okay. good. That's, that's good. right. Probably keeping you alive then. <laughs> anyway. In the article, the guy uh, indicates you're kind of a pioneer and mm. innovator. And then he says, word for word, he says, without Dave, there would be no Leno. There would be no Conan O'Brien. There would be no Craig Kilborn. There would be no John Stewart. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. You yeah. On that yeah. 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 No, I was. Yeah. <laughs> that was unexpected. Yeah. So, with all those guys, you're responsible for. I got a, a thing to say to you. You got a lot to answer for. Yeah, is okay. all I'm now, telling you. That screwed now, it all uh, up. Are you, uh, <laughs> George? You, I know you're always looking for a, a gimmick, kind a of a hook. Gimmick. To, yeah. To well, hang your well, career on. I've been kind of sneaky the last couple what, what of years. I got. I got a confession. I have been the last couple of years on your show. I've been stealing material from dead comedians. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah. that's and, horrible. Yeah. Well, it is, it's awful, but it works out really nicely. Really? I'll tell you why. <laughs> because, because you do the best of their stuff, you get good laughs on the show, and the best part, no embarrassing phone calls the next day. <laughs> Once in a while, you get a widow bitching, but I don't give a damn. About I don't care about that. I, I... <laughs> um. Hey, I got. Can I do it? Can I tell you about my my uh, friend who came uh, may have come out of the closet? Did you hear about this? Because no, I, I didn't tell you. Well, my friend, I heard about this uh, that uh, he come out of the closet. I did, I'd known him for a year, so I called him up. I, t I tell me the truth. Are you gay? Yeah. He said damn straight. Right. So I still don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I Eddie Brill, let me applause. Eddie, let me applause. What, uh, what are we doing here? What, what has caught your eye on the news? Yeah, I oh, know you're, my uh, God. You, you read everything you get your oh, hands on. Oh, I get. You're well, first of all, reader. you get I read anything about getting old and, and, and I'm yeah, preoccupied with morbid stuff. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, I really oh, am. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Oh, yeah, like you really don't think about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. This, is un this is unbelievable, this whole set. Now, now you young people, I wonder, can I say something Some to the young guys in the audience? The young guy, your 20s and your 30s, right. you young guys, you think you're smart now. You wait till you get into your 50s and your 60s and your mind wanders. You're not as attentive. You young guys, I guarantee you, you get into your 50s, you will accidentally bang yourself in the nuts two, three times a week. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is 
wrong with you? <laughs> why would you say a thing like that? Oh, yeah, why would oh, I say a, a thing like that? You have Paul saying how many times uh, okay. Julia Roberts oh, screwing oh, people, okay. and then I can't say the stuff about it. Okay, yeah, right. right. <laughs> All right, George, we'll see you in Las Vegas uh, August I 20th. got more jokes. Oh, we got to go. George right, Miller, everybody, the always peculiar. We'll be right back. Out of time, my thanks to George and Juliana Margulies. What a lovely couple. And tomorrow night, Vince Vaughn and Elaine Boozler. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Greg Gilmore. <laughs>
And what's, what's your son doing now? He remembered me when I was a little kid. Well, uh, he's a comedian. He's been on Merv Griffin. He's been on Johnny Carson. been on David Letterman. Oh, that's wonderful, a mm. comedian. That is really nice. So a couple weeks later, it's the holiday season. She, my mom gets a Christmas card from the guy. Uh, Merry Christmas, Helen. Happy New Year. Hope everything goes good for you next year. Uh, God bless you, uh, your friend Leroy Johnson. Uh, P.S., and how is Sonny Boy? Is he still with the band? <laughs> well, you see, nobody pays attention. I guess that's the problem. I guess that's, I guess now, the... I want you to tell me a story. I know uh, about six months ago, <laughs> you were thrown out of a Starbucks. Sometimes I'm off balance. You were thrown oh, out I of was, a... I was ejected from a Starbucks. That's I right. want to mention these sons of bitches, too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I... No. <laughs> Not in general, because I like Starbucks, but this was the 26th in Wilshire in Santa Monica. <laughs> Don't go to the 26th in Wilshire. Well, I what had, happened, I had actually sakes. spent, this is not an exaggeration, in five years, because I read the newspaper, I get the Triple Expresso, mm -hmm. I got $5,000, $5,000, $6,000 in this place. I was reading a day-old newspaper that shouldn't have been there. The guy told me to stop reading it. Really? I gave him a lot of heat. I gave him a lot of lip. And then he asked me to leave. Oh. And I said, I'm not leaving. Call the police, not <laughs> knowing that the moron would actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened? Well, I, I don't know. I, I kind of hurriedly uh, finished my coffee. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I kind of quickly. Did you go to the pokey? I, I, well, what happened? I, no, I got out. Well, I'm, you know what I'm figuring? I'm figuring you got crack dealers. You got the Rampart scandals. You got drive-bys. Are eight police cars going to, uh, you know, dispatch themselves mm -hmm. to Starbucks? I'm reading not. the no. day old. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So I call up Mr. Fink, the district manager in Seattle. <laughs> Mr. Fink was his name. It's actually true. And Mr. Fink does an, a thorough investigation, and he calls back, and he says, we, we would feel more comfortable if you went to another Starbucks. <laughs> uh, now, now, let me, uh, let, you, uh, let me ask you all a question. Where am I going to find another Starbucks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My hair I got more to the story, too. All right, well, let's... Well, there's more to the story. You know, I'm not a tough person, mm. you know. Remember I used to say I was once beaten up by Marvin Hamlet? Yes, that's Remember right, yeah, that? Right. Yeah. But well, I'm not a tough person. This has to do with the story, because I was thinking of really getting revenge on this guy. But the only real fight I had uh, uh, since I'd been grown up, one night there was a big guy. I was working at the Hungry Wart up in Seattle. <laughs> Great place. I learned all my stuff at the Wart up there, you know. And there's a big guy at the bar. He's about 6'4", about 240 pounds, bad mouth, and everybody yeah. lost my temper momentarily. Yeah. And I went up to the guy, shoved him up against the bar. Oh, oh. I don't care how big you are. You ever say anything like that in here again, I'm going to bust you right in the mouth. I was Ooh. really hot. Yeah. I told him, I said, now you take your guide dog and get out of here. <laughs> wow. You want an old stuff? You got new stuff. <laughs> Deep into the fight. So, I'm... I'm thinking I'm going to get this guy, but I did some research first because I'm very bad this at revenge. The, the, yeah. This is the guy that kicked Fink, me out. Right. No, this is the Fink, Fink is up in Seattle. Yeah. So I, I want to get the manager who mm -hmm. kicked me out and has barred me from Starbucks right. where I spent $5,000. I understand. Yeah. So, but I find out later the guy has a history. He was with the 18th Street gang before he was at Starbucks, a notorious gang in know. Los Angeles, oh, the 18th really? Street yeah. gang. Yeah, but he was so stupid they had to kick him out of the 18th Street gang because he kept forgetting where the gang was located. <laughs> is, that, is that true? They'd find him wandering around with Figueroa. They didn't... <laughs> Figueroa. <laughs> Figueroa, yeah. A key word, Figueroa, yeah. <laughs> All, the whole story is true except the 18th now, Street gang. Uh, I, I know, God, George, my hair looks like it, hell. It, it, why does that sit down? You, uh, uh, you're always looking for a, like a gimmick or something. How, how have you done? Have you, have you found a, a, like a hook? For I've been your doing act? some. Can I, uh, I? I was doing a little uh, uh, acting, as you know. Anytime I do any acting on the show, it's a little awkward doing it from here. You usually do it stand up. Uh -huh. So I get advice from my brother, who is, as you know, a very, very well known actor, Bruno Kirby. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Your brother is Bruno yeah, Kirby? Yeah, my real name is George Kirby, but I, I had to change because it was another yeah. George Kirby. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't know that. I have had a little bit of acting in real life, and this is embarrassing to talk about. I used to have this girlfriend years ago, and we would do kind of kinky sexual stuff where oh. we, we would 
pretend to be other people. Uh, and she got real tired of it. I she see. says, well, why can't we just be ourselves? Uh, yeah. I said, have you taken a good look at us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that makes perfect sense. That was good acting. I did a good acting. Lovely job, George. Thank you very much. Now, um, oh yeah, wait, wait, one thing right here, the current events joke, the fellow passed away, the guy who invented the easy boy, lazy boy? Oh, this is a very interesting, this was, I thought the most, I, uh, absolutely true from the paper about four years ago, I never got to this. Yeah. The guy who invented the lazy boy recliner right. died in one. I, oh yeah, Actually, I read about that, yeah. Okay, so the guy is like 90 years old, he had a heart attack or a stroke or something, he's relaxing in the easy, he died in what he invented, mm. pretty ironic, similar thing happened to my great uncle, really? he had a heart attack, he was real old, he had a heart attack oh. and died, of course he didn't invent the hooker, <laughs> but still, George Miller everybody, in the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, December 24th. We'll see you, George. We'll be back with Carol King. <laughs> Very nice, Will Lee. Paul Schaefer in the car. Will Lee. Our next guest is a very funny man. He performs regularly at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, and on May 23rd through the 26th, you can see him at the Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino in Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, George Miller. What did, plugs. Yeah, did you I get Bobby plug. Knight's luggage? What yes, happened? They just said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just said the same thing Is that backstage, right? yeah. Bobby Knight. Yeah, they good just to see did you. the luggage part. You, though. you look great. How yeah. are you? Everything oh, good? I'm pretty, pretty good. And I wanted to say, because I haven't been here since all the big brouhaha, because he was uh, CBS, he might go to ABC, CBS, ABC, silly. CBS, yeah. ABC, and then wound up where he started... Uh, CBS. So, on behalf of the country and everybody in the country, I would like to say you, to you uh, one more time, thank you, Dave, for wasting everybody's time. <laughs> well, sure, I do what I can. Now, um... <laughs> oh, I had another thing too because you know uh, I forgot to tell you this. I might have told you that you know Clinton's on Newsweek. You can't get rid of that guy. He's on Newsweek <laughs> That's right. again. Yeah. He's on music, and they got him $12 million for the book. The same company, I think it's Alfred A. Knopf, they, they offered me a million to do a, a book on Dave. Was oh, that right? And I said, well, what are you talking about? They said, well, you know him for 27 years. I said, but the guy don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, even... Well, no, wait a minute. <laughs> it ain't through yet. <laughs> I say, even with the dirt, I got two pages. I, mean, I can't. <laughs> nothing there. Well, it, I appreciate your discretion. Thank well, you very much. I had, and I always talk about the last couple of years, I had this problem with the involuntary reflux of, a, of flicking eyebrows. Your eye, eyelashes, yeah, yeah. eyebrows seem to be yeah. just vibrating. I can't, or I, we'll I we'll can't stop that. Have you ever just thought I, about stopping uh, it? Well, I've thought. I thought <laughs> Well, that, that's like, I don't know what that's like. Yeah. But I went, to, uh, I went to Budget Doctor finally. I finally, oh. yeah, but $3 a visit. Remember, I used to go to Budget Psychiatrist, $3 a visit. Oh, you get what you pay for. Really? Is there? <laughs> I'm threatening suicide. He's saying you got to do what you got to do. Well, that's not, that's, that's not, not good. good. That's yeah. not good at all. So Budget Doctor puts me in the hospital. He said oh. you got to go to Budget Hospital. Only $3 a night. I think, what do I got to lose $3 <laughs> a night? They didn't have good equipment. They didn't even have anything to take my temperature with the doctor has oh, to no. use his wife's meat thermometer <laughs> oh my, my god. god i didn't mind taking off all my clothes but getting into that little pan was a bitch oh <laughs> you poor devil did you report any of this <laughs> paul's just shaking his head in uh, bewilderment <laughs> uh, so so how how is everything else going <laughs> oh everything is just fine and today I kind of wanted to tell you about uh, some stuff might maybe you don't know about. Oh, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff that maybe, because uh, you know me a long time, but 
First of all, in my, late, uh, my early days, I should say uh, the late 60s, my early days, I was kind of like, I thought of myself as the king of the unemployment club mm. in downtown L.A. Yeah. And you'd always have to go down in those days. Now you can mail it in, I guess. But, so I would always try to be Mr. Cool Guy. And what I wanted to do tonight, because I tried to get into more and more acting, because as you know, sure. my brother is the famous actor, Bruno Kirby. <laughs> I, I, I find that hard to believe. Well, that's absolutely true. It's my, true. My real name is George Kirby, but that was <laughs> taken, take so I always have to mention that. And he gives me advice on acting uh, on your well, show. Bruno's very good. He is excellent. He's yeah. very, very good. Uh, Donnie Bras Brasco, mm -hmm. isn't it? Sure. So what I do is I do both parts now. As I'm at the unemployment office, I'll take both parts. Okay. It was always the same. I was always Mr. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, did you look for work this week? Uh, yes, I did. Do you have any offers? Well, several, but I was so busy looking for work. I, uh... <laughs> well, Are you bilingual? Well, of course, I do it with anybody. I don't well, care. Now, I don't, it doesn't matter. I, now, I, I know one thing. Uh, chopped off the laugh. No, there, it's I fine. Now, I know. <laughs> what do you mean that's fine? <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, we didn't chop anything off. Chopped off the laugh. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold it. He says it's, it's a comedy show, he chops the laugh off, and then he says, that's fine. No, you'll, you'll make, believe, that. believe me, you'll make it up here in this next little exchange. Uh, I've got more past stuff no, to tell you. Now, I want to know about your, your grandfather. No. Now, he's a fascinating fellow. Well, Dave, he does know about this. My grandfather is on my father's side in the late 40s, uh, or maybe early 50s, I'm not sure, originated the handshake. <laughs> He, he actually yeah. originated the handshake. Before that, people either nodded or tipped their hat. That was it. Uh -huh. And also, I see, I told you. Now, also, my, uh, you don't know about this. My grandmother uh -huh. on my father's side was, was professionally involved with boxing. She really? at one time was the cut man for Hurricane Jackson. <laughs> and in my, my favorite, you know, my favorite boxer of all time is that Buster Douglas. Oh, Buster yeah, Douglas. Yeah, because sure. when he was overweight, he actually had bosoms. And one time I got confused. I thought it was Marsha Warfield. <laughs> I don't want to cut that off. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let that go. Now, how, I, how's, your, how's your social life going? Oh, man, I haven't had sex since I was an altar boy. It was really <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> That's awful. Horrible. That's just horrible. an awful thing yeah, to say. I noticed there was no cutoff on that joke. Yeah. Oh, God. What, uh, what else has uh, been on your mind? Uh, well, it's a lot of... <laughs> A lot of things. I don't. I don't. I hate this McDonald's uh, uh, commercial. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, I got a riddle. I forgot about this. I want to do a riddle. Can I? Can I? Uh, I'll, I'll. I was never done a riddle on your show before. I'll name the famous uh, slogan, and then you name the company. You guys okay. in the audience. Can I okay. play? In the balcony. No, no, you're not. You don't count. <laughs> this is. Uh, we bring good things to life. Jeez. Wrong. Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I was going to do some stuff that I really don't like. I don't like these cliches. The, the, at the end of the day, people who say at the end of the day, at the end of the day should be shot, I think. <laughs> I really don't like And then, oh, yeah, and people tell you you're in denial. Uh -huh. I hate, but the worst thing is, well, you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Well, tell that to Elton John, because he <laughs> certainly. I, uh, April 20th. You'll be at Caesars Lake Tahoe. Well, I had more. I'm sure you do. <laughs> May 23rd through the 26th at Mohegan. We already mentioned that, so good and, for you. And Dr. Q's pool room in Seattle losing all my money. All right, good. Nice to see you, Thank George. you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank George, you. Shake my hand now. George Miller, everybody. We'll be right back. Thanks to George Miller, Rosie Perez, Gina Cruz. Tomorrow night, United States Attorney General John Ashcroft will be here singing that song that he wrote. Singing, yeah. He'll be singing. And also five-year-old actress Dee Dee Davis from the Bernie Mac show. Craig Kilborn is next. Good night, everybody. Thanks again, George. Stop calling!
Okay, so here we are. Our next guest is a uh, very funny man, albeit rather odd and peculiar. He'll be performing September 16th through the 22nd at the Riviera in Las Vegas. Here's our good friend George Miller, everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I do a, a few opening remarks before we do the official sure, interview? Sure. Be with my guest. Make yourself well, at home. First of all, I, it's this time of year, so I was hoping that you would. I'll just do it for you okay. now because uh, I didn't know if you were going to do it. But I was. Uh, I wanted you to ask me your favorite question. Did you have a nice summer? Mm -hmm. So I could say, Oh yes, Dave. It's just been peachy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. That was, that, that was all there was to that one. Now I have some more. Wait, wait. I got more. I, I always dig myself in a hole. I can come back. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Just hang on. All right? Just wait. So just you're wait. handicapping yourself early, yeah, and wait, then you I, come back. I go, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now I got the, uh, uh, the uh, as, as you always know, the involuntary eye, eye uh, flipper. The, uh, right. Twitch. It's a twitch. Yeah. And nobody can do Some anything about Some kind of about neurological it. disorder. Yeah. Oh, I got one thing I forgot. Big news bulletin. I forgot about this. We'll get to the twitch later. Now... <laughs> So now the FBI has officially given up on bin Laden. They really? don't know if he's dead. Oh. They don't know if he's alive. And so they've reorganized, and they're putting all their efforts and energy into trying to locate Mac Davis. <laughs> <laughs> really? Mac Davis? That's a commercial joke? I didn't know that. I, I, I can't Mac figure Davis. that out. That's a commercial, yeah, that's a commercial, I thought, commercial I thought, joke. Commercial joke. Well, I thought it, just, yeah. it would be us three maybe no, on that. it's commercial. I didn't know. I didn't know. Turns out it's commercial. It's yeah. commercial. That was, that was, that was good. Yeah. And so now the eyebrow twitch. So I go to, to budget doctor a buck a visit. A Bu buck. Budget doctor? Yeah, budget doctor. <laughs> now, I don't like stuff that's marked down. Mm -hmm. I, I think just uh, as... You a, get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Right. Yeah, and maybe this is a digression, but years ago, I think you know this, I bought some discount insect killer. What a Jip, yeah. what a weak product. Oh, boy. Had to catch the bugs by hand and then dip them in this stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Sorry. It's amazing they get away with selling that crap. It's horrible. So, I go to budget, budget doctor. doctor. He can't help me. Nobody can help Nobody me. It's can. involuntary. I don't even know when it's happening. It's embarrassing. You try I don't... to put ice on it? Well... <laughs> I haven't tried that, Price. but that's an excellent idea. Thank and you. thanks a lot for saying I've been on the show way too many times. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very, very... That's worse than half-wit. <laughs> I'm just kind of underlining the obvious. <laughs> now, so now, I go... <laughs> I can't get ahead. You're fine. I can't get ahead. Right. That's why the, the he's there. Doctor. All right, budget doctor. So anyway, this guy is, he can't get rid of the twitch, but he's a really nice guy. He's not a money grubber like oh, some good, doctors. Good. In fact, anytime he does surgery, he will always give a discount if he's coming off a three-day crack binge. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Yeah. Well, he makes that promise in the flyers that he puts on car windshields, so it's, it's pretty good. He's pretty nice. Well, it's nice so, to know you're in good hands. So those were my opening remarks. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Now, now yeah. we have to uh, do a commercial. Oh no, there yes. won't be any yes. of that. And then we'll oh. be right back with George Miller, everyone. Here. We have a couple of minutes uh, left. Well, couple uh, minutes, two maybe, minutes. Maybe you can tell us what a guy like you does for uh, for fun. What uh, do you have hobbies? I watch a lot of TV. TV. I've been yeah. watching. I've been watching your show, and I don't want to be presumptuous, mm -hmm. but I think there could be a couple of improvements if I if, right. you don't, if you don't mind. Please go ahead. I mean, no, no, it's, it's your show. You've made that very clear. <laughs> and I, I, so now you got a guy like Jeff Goldblum, oh, very yeah, entertaining, great. Yeah. great. But sometimes you'll have an actor or an actress. I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll check with Janine Garofalo. Maybe it's just everybody's just an actor now. I don't know. I yeah. can't tell. Uh -huh. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so so you, so you got this actor, and it's just not going. It's really dragging. Right. Now here's the juice. Here's the juice. See what you do. You, instead of trying to help out, instead of trying to help out like you do, you you reach over with your right hand right. and you and you grab the actor and you shake him. You shake him, and you, just, you, you say, "Excuse me, Ron. Television. Could you be a little more interesting?" <laughs>
And I want to say, that in complimenting you, that I always enjoyed viewer mail, yeah. but now I really like it because I'm at the age now when Biff pushes the pen into the map, uh -huh. I get some sort of sexual gratification. Really? What about um, what about current events? Current about, uh, so you, now I know you're a, a ball fan, baseball fan. You went to Yankee Stadium last night. Yes. What, did you, what did you think of this whole thing with Ted uh, Williams? Oh stuff? my God, that was something that freezing. It's very depressing. Now, just if you're not hip to this, it's cryonic or cryogenics. I'm not sure which they, no, no, they no. use them interchangeably. I think what happens is okay, you pass away, then they freeze you later on. Hopefully, they'll discover a cure for what killed you. They'll use that on you. They'll defrost you. You'll be up walking around again. Wow. See? But I was thinking, suppose what killed you was you froze to death. <laughs> Can I speak now or not? Yeah, okay. It's your turn. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're on television. Why don't you try to be a little more interesting? Yeah, I, I knew. I knew I would get that. <laughs> I don't want to hurt don't, you. Don't you start shaking me. Don't now, you start shaking me. Now, the me. classic yeah. comics of late night. This yes. is you and your friends. Who else is in that group? Yeah, well, you, we got JJ, so uh, that proves nothing, Jimmy Walker. Can, nothing can stop us. Right. And uh, we got uh, a Bobby Kel right. Kelly Monteith, uh, Johnny Dark, a lot of... Lot of, lot of you guys Van will be Kara, appearing in uh, Lancaster, Lancaster, California at the Art Center, Lancaster, California, November 8th. Performing Art Center, November 8th. Right. And should I do the, the web? The web is latenightcomics.com. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice to see you again, and Thanks George. a lot. Yeah. Thank Good you luck with much. the Thank eyebrow you. twitch. Thank you. We'll be right back, everybody. Have you, uh, I, I know uh, as, a, as a comedian, one, one of the places everybody uh, wants to work because it's all right there for Oh, you. my God, I'm winded from uh, that joke. Yeah, the joke, yeah. <laughs> That's the very best I will best say, in, in all sincerity, I know you don't like to hear these things. Emotions, you're like Nixon and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Nixon. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I will say, your hero was Johnny Carson. Yeah. Well, you are my Johnny Carson. Oh, stop it. Please, Norm. Please, let's get all now, these up. Now, but what, what complicates things, what complicates things a little, Dave, is Johnny Carson was also my Johnny Carson. Good. So I have two Johnny Carsons. Here, let me just say something about you. One of the many things that I love about you <laughs> was your love of George Miller, who was a great friend of mine. Oh, my God, I love George yeah, Miller. Yeah. Can I do a George Miller joke? Yeah, do a George Miller joke. Uh, this is a George Miller joke. He goes, uh, I was watching Wild Kingdom <laughs> with my mother. Yeah. It said at the end, directed by Wolfgang Bauer. <laughs> Produced by Wolfgang Bauer. <laughs> my mother said, do you suppose that's the same? <laughs> Wolfgang Bauer? Is that the same Wolfgang Bauer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what's uh, your favorite joke, uh, Well, my favorite joke, and it'll take a little uh, explaining. I've told it over and over again. It was told by his girlfriend uh, at his memorial after he had passed away. He and his girlfriend, not getting along very well, and, and George apparently one night had come into her apartment while she was gone and done some mischief. Uh -huh. And so she called the police, and she sent them to George's house, and, and the cops were saying, do you know anything about this? And he said, well, no, what happened? He said, well, uh, among other things, somebody wrote an obscenity on her bedside picture of Jesus Christ. And George said, oh, I thought that was Dan Fogelberg. <laughs> Strong, huh? Sure. 